Hi there, it's Kathy Cates and Melissa Hines from the Institute for Pelvic Health. And you're watching Demystifying the Pelvic Floor, weekly videos providing real and simplified pelvic floor education for real clinical situations. We've got you covered. And today we'll be talking about what your patients can expect during a pelvic floor evaluation or assessment. As nurse practitioners, we are pressed for time. We hope that, the, that talking through the way that we do pelvic exams will give you a little more comfort for both you and your patient for the pelvic exam. So first thing, make sure that your stool is the right height so that your feet are firmly planted on the floor. No hunching over, feet on the floor. Then you're gonna ask your patient to take three long, slow breaths, and you're gonna do the same. That's gonna have you both breathing with your diaphragm and when you breathe with your diaphragm, the diaphragm descends and so does the pelvic floor. So you're setting your patient up to have a much more comfortable pelvic exam. Mm -hmm. So then we ask the patient to get on the table after we've done a postural ass assessment and looked at overall alignment. Um, we have them lie on their backs with their knees bent. Um, we're looking, while they're taking that deep breath, you're really looking to see like, is the breath only in the chest? Are they using their shoulders and neck or are they getting that breath all the way down into their low belly? That will tell you a lot. If it's getting down into their low belly, chances are they have good motor control of their pelvic floor and that good brain pelvic floor connection. Um, then we're looking at the adductor muscles. Are they, you know, shaking on the table? Is there like, are those muscles really dense and like standing out to you? If so, then you're thinking, okay, well, maybe there could be some hypertonicity in the pelvic floor. Um, so just kind of keeping track of all these things. And if you do find that there's a little bit of shaking going on, just gently ask permission and then just put a hand on each side. And again, you and your patient can take three breaths together. And then you can just gently, super gentle, and sometimes just that gentle touch right there is enough to let those adductors just soften a little bit. Mm -hmm. And friendly reminder, try to do all of this without the stirrups. You just don't need them. Right. So then you're doing a visual inspection of the external area that Kathy's going to walk you through. And we like to, in the clinic, kind of tell our patients exactly what we're doing, what yeah. we're like finding like anatomy wise, because patients often find it interesting and it's kind of an educational moment to really tell your patients that this is a normal area that can get tight or have dysfunction um, and to really normalize it. And we always offer a mirror, right? Because sometimes people have never looked. So yeah. we always have a mirror on hand, offer the mirror, and then you're looking at the vulva, at the labia, at the perineum. And you're looking for erythema, you're looking for- Dryness. Any, totally, dryness. You're looking for any maybe tiny little like micro tears in the tissue, just looking. Also looking for hygiene. Right, right. Yeah. Um, so once you've gotten a good external visual inspection, then we tell the patient, we're gonna insert one finger, one glove finger with lubricant. You'll feel our finger, it's nice and gentle. Um, and we tell them exactly what we're doing. We go in, I generally find the tailbone or the coccyx first, which would be that that six o'clock point. Um, and I work my you way- have to go, Sorry, Melissa, you have to go like all the way in with your finger and go down. So I understand like we're always trained to like go find that cervix, but just notice what you feel before you get to your cervix. Yeah. Um, so once you find the coccyx, you're kind of just moving all around that pelvic bowl. Think of it as a clock where the coccyx is six, kind of that pubic bone area, bladder area is 12. And then the ilium are, your three and your nine. Um, so that kind of helps you guide all that area's mus musculature. 
um, you're looking for symmetry here. So if there's areas that are really tender to the patient when you gently press, then you're thinking, okay, that could be a trigger point, hypertonicity. Um, also, we're looking for motor control issues here. So having them take a diaphragmatic breath, are they able to release that pelvic floor or are they squeezing as you do that? Um, asking them to squeeze around your finger, it should be symmetrical in nature. They shouldn't be overly squeezing at the rectum um, or they shouldn't over, be overly squeezing at periurethrally. Um, so you want that squeeze to be really like symmetrical. And also um, making sure front to back, but also side to side, right? That you feel that it's- The whole area. The whole yeah. side to side and then front to back. And then um, also asking them to do a Valsalva and you're looking, does the pelvic floor drop when they do a Valsalva? Or for some patients, actually that paradoxical contraction happens and it's the opposite where they, they contract when you ask them to bear down. Right. Um, so all of that, it can be done assessment wise pretty quickly. I would say we can do all of that in five minutes. Um, and I have done it, all of this in a 15 minute office visit. So you can absolutely do it. It's a fantastic time to educate your patients about what your findings are, what those muscles do, that the pelvic floor supports urinary, bowel, bladder, and sexual health. And probably the most important thing is that whatever you find, you're normalizing it for your patient. Totally. And like, so important to start talking about this at a young age too. Um, all right, and that's a wrap. Did you like this video? If so, hit like and subscribe. Please share with your colleagues. Comment below to let us know the biggest challenges in getting your patients to a pelvic floor therapist. And subscribe to our email list at instituteforpelvichealth.com to get your free guide for tips for managing your challenging pelvic exam. And you'll get access to our weekly pelvic health content. And you can find us on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn, where we'll post more pelvic health tips. We're super excited to announce that we have, we're developing an online course for nurse practitioners to educate them on pelvic health. Our course will break down the pelvic floor so that you can confidently care for your patients with all kinds of pelvic floor dysfunction. By simplifying the pelvic floor, we'll improve your patient outcomes and your provider experience. Thanks for watching and spreading the word. Let's revolutionize the field of pelvic floor health. We'll see you soon.